Hi, I'm Dave Whitney and welcome to this lesson on modes. Modes can be really, really confusing and uh, I must say it took me a little while to get my head around exactly how it all works. But it, once you do, it's not so bad, okay? There is, a, uh, there is a silver lining on the cloud there. Now, uh, the short tone, the short one, 100, one of my subscribers uh, sent me a message asking a little bit about um, about modes and let me explain to you how I understand them and how I apply them. There, there may be people with vastly different understandings and applications but that's what I've found with modes is it's universally misunderstood I think pretty much by by most players who try to explain it and I hope I do a reasonable job of explaining it okay. Now the first thing I'll say is to understand or to begin to understand modes you first of all have to understand the intervals the gaps between each note in a major scale okay if you don't know what a major scale is then you better learn that you better learn the of a major scale. I'm going to work in the key of G here for no particular reason other than the fact that it will allow me to easily move up and down the guitar without having to uh, run out of notes up here and come back here. I don't want to confuse anyone. So the notes of a G major scale are what we call Ionian, right? Ionian. It's the first set of intervals, right, in any key. Now there are seven modes in total, the first one being the Ionian. It's the root scale of a major key. Now, before we go into, um, into uh, any great depth, when you look at any of the modes, right, the Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, or Locrian modes, before you... Um, you uh, try anything with them, understand that they are just different groups of intervals between notes. For example, in the major scale, the interval between the first three notes is whole step, whole step, okay? Two whole steps, that's the interval. I start on the root note G, I do a whole step to A, I do a whole step to B, okay? Now, for example, the Dorian mode has a different set of intervals for those three notes. It has whole step, half step, which is a semitone or one fret on the guitar, right? Whole step, uh, so I start on the root, I play A, then I play B flat. That's, that's how the Dorian mode looks at those. So it's a different group of intervals. So um, the Phrygian mode would look at them in a different way. Again, it, the first three notes would be root, semitone, step up, whole step, so root, half step, whole step, different again, right? Has a whole different sound, doesn't it? Has a very different flavour to it, right? Yet all the notes I'm playing um, are simply the notes of a of a major scale that is not the G major scale anymore and this is the concept I want to exp explain it's like it's like one of those slide rules where if you slide it along um, uh, and you match two things up you look back here and you go hey yeah, I know what I know what's happening if you've never used a slide roll straight over your head doesn't matter anyway look so it's a diff a different set of intervals right each mode has a different set of intervals between the root the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, and back to the root again, all right? Now that's all the modes really are in their essence, okay? They're a different set of intervals. If you like, you could call them seven different types of scale, okay? Now, most people know of the major scale. Most people know of the natural minor scale, the harmonic minor scale. melodic minor scale, which is a combination of, of uh, the 
natural and the harmonic minor. Um, and, uh, you know, and those ones. Well, the modes are just more of that type of thing. Now, uh, each mode has its own flavour, has its own sound. Just like when I said I was playing the Phrygian mode. It sounds like that old country, that old uh, Western gunfighter thing. You know, now, how you choose notes in each scale is your bag. It's not mine, okay? It's, it, I'm not going to tell you which notes to choose because it's all about uh, you in that particular instance. This is all about modes. It's got nothing to do with the choice of notes you, uh, you do. So, the next, the next thing to approach is learning the patterns because this is very, very pattern-oriented uh, stuff uh, to, and it'll help you learn it, you know, uh, learning patterns. So, let's look at the first pattern, okay? Now, patterns are not modes, right? What we're learning is shapes that can help you to understand and to use the, uh, the modes a little bit better. So let's look at the Ionian shape. It's created by playing the notes of a major scale, starting on the first note of the major scale. Just like that. The Ionian shape. It's the everyday, ordinary major scale that we all know and love, okay? Now, if I play the same notes, but starting on the second note in the scale, so... I have the Dorian shape. Okay. So, if I was to play the notes of G major, but starting on the third note of the scale, which is B, okay. I end up with a... Sound, but that's that's that one we had before. If I was to play um, the notes, so that's Phrygian, right? That's called a Phrygian pattern. If I was to play the notes of G major, but starting on the fourth note, which is C. play uh, the notes of G major, starting on the fifth note, which is D. So I would end up with... this sound. A dominant seventh sound, right? Uh, which would be... Uh, which would be, sorry... is the Mixolydian shape, okay? Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Elydian, Mixolydian. The next shape that I come to if I start on the sixth note of the E major scale is, is the scale that is known as the natural minor scale, the relative minor scale. It's called the Aeolian mode, okay? If I start on the seventh note of G major, and which is the F sharp, and I play all the notes of G major, I have what's called a Locrian or Locrian shape.